All right. Hold on right quick. Let me test my board right quick. This nigga would call me right now. What's good, bro? What's good, man? <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? I'm good, man. Shit. You good? You good? Everything straight? Yep. yep. Shit. Chilling. All right. Bet it up. I bet you, hey, again, you got yeah. anything that you want me to touch on? Did you think about anything that you wanted me to touch on? Shit, no, nah, I was just going to, I mean, shit, like I told you, I'm I'm open to anything, so. All right. You want to ask some wild or oh, some crazy shit. questions? Nah, let's get it. I see you over there fresh as shit. I see you got the, you know, <laughs> got the gold chain on and stuff. I see you. <laughs> I see you. Ooh. Oh, shit. Oh, well, you must be in a lab. You in the studio or something? What's up? Nah, this my it's like it's like my my room. Like I set it up like this. Oh, for that's hard. Like, no, I like yeah, that. Yeah, I be doing hard. recording stuff. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Better up. Better up. So, look before we get into your story, my man. Just you know, go ahead and tell us a little bit about you. You know where you from? Your age? You know any hobbies that you like to do? You know you got the floor. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. So my name is Tone. Uh. Um, thirty. I just turned thirty. Uh, yeah, getting up there. <laughs> that boy getting old. Getting that boy getting old. I, I'm thirty one, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Before the chair, uh, I was playing football. Uh, okay. Working at the oil refinery. Uh, mm-hmm. That's my, and then I was into the like the car scene and stuff and okay. doing my motorcycle stuff. Okay, you uh, was deep in now, the car scene. Uh, yeah, in LA. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I was at like the takeovers and stuff. Yeah. Okay. I remember when you drove out here, you was like, <laughs> when you <laughs> got stuck in one of them. Yeah, that used to be me. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. I ain't gonna lie, man. The so, takeover yeah. was cool, man, but shit, they can't be taking over the intersection for like 30 minutes, bro. <laughs> like, come on, man. Like, I, bro, I got somewhere to be, bro. You, look, I gotta drive back to Bakersfield, bro. That's a two hour drive. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what I was, was laughing like, when no. I saw you stuck in one. But yeah, hell yeah. Uh, so yeah, um, now that I'm in a chair, man. Um, most of my hobbies, man, is just really like I still in a car scene, but I don't be doing all the shit that I used to be doing. Okay. And then um, uh, I'm bowling now, and then okay. I'm trying to get into this wheelchair basketball and football. Ooh, so okay, okay. Yeah, trying to get active with that stuff, and then yeah, I, my YouTube and. Barbecue, mm-hmm. shit. I know, I know, I know. I see you on the YouTube car vibes react. You feel me? We yeah, shouted yeah, you out. Man. I believe it was if it wasn't the last video, we shot yeah, it. Yeah, it was the second video, I think. So, yeah, man. I saw that, man. So yeah, I was like, man, man. So, that's why I, I always, res- I always appreciate you, bro. You always be nah, looking out. Bro. I look, my man. I appreciate you for real, for real, like for yeah. real, for real, bro. I really appreciate you because you one of the ones that really, you know, I mean, get me in my comfort zone because, bro, ever since my accident, bro, like. Yeah, I'm, like people might see me on camera, and but they don't realize like I'm really reclusive. Like you know what I mean? Like I'm really just to myself for real, for real. Self, yeah. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? And like it's not so, understandable. Yeah, man. So, but I appreciate you getting me out of my comfort zone sometimes. You feel me? Sometimes, yes, sir, man. I'm you still about I mean? to so, try to get your ass out there on that camping trip, man. <laughs> man, I, bro, I don't mess with camping, bro. I'm telling you, <laughs> look, bro. The thought of camping is cool, bro. But when you get out there, bro, after the first hour, bro, you, bro, I'm ready to go, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, look, I want to buy the tent. I want to buy the little stove that you cook with. I want to buy all that. But then when we get out there, bro, I'm ready to use that real fast. And then once I'm done using that, shit, I'm ready to go. Yeah, that's it. He bro. said, "I only need a couple of hours out there. I'm gonna take me back <laughs> For home. real? Hey, look, let me throw my rod in the water. I'm good, bro. That's it. You feel <laughs> me? Like, oh uh, yeah. Ocean. See, see, man, I ain't been fishing, so like, that's why I want you. I really want you to go down. Now that you said well, that, because I want to go. Hold up, you ain't never been fishing. I I have been, but I haven't been fishing since like being in the chair. Like, okay, I." I went actually no, I'm lying. I met my uh ace that I do my uh YouTube with. Okay. He came up with some random idea. It was like, let's hop on a boat and go fishing. Okay. So we did that. And okay. I almost hated it, bro, because I was out there for like three hours, bro. Didn't catch not one fish. 
And then right when like I catch that. one, I start catching like two or three of them. Yeah, bro. Oh, yeah. It'd be like that too. So, yeah. It'd be like that too. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, look, at least you yeah. got the luxury to go on the boat. You feel me? Like growing up my whole life, we <laughs> we really fish from the shore a lot. I got to go on the boat like one time, but but uh, in reality, like that was like a real highlight. You know what I mean? But for the yeah. most part, but like for the most part, we always fish from the shore or like fish from like a pier and stuff like that. But bro, we used to always go fishing like. You know what I mean? Like at nighttime, like like cause Virginia kind of like the country. So like we were doing like yeah. a whole bunch of fishing. And then when we moved to Georgia, we didn't really do too much fishing because the closest fishing spot was Savannah, which was like three and a half hours away. And shit, yeah, that's a far yeah, draw. Just yeah, hell yeah. yeah. And then in Georgia, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, bro, the travel different. Like a three hour drive in Georgia. Bro, that shit, I don't, bro, it feel like a three hour drive, but a three hour drive here in Cali, it bro, it don't feel that bad. Like it, maybe it, it yeah, really maybe because all the sightseeing that you got, it, except for when you in the exactly. south, it's nothing but trees and shit exactly, that you looking at, bro. Exactly, <laughs> it's so much to look at when you driving here and catch mountains here, mountains there. You feel me, <laughs> bro? Wildfire right there. You feel me? Like, <laughs> hey, bro, I done popped up on a bro. It's crazy the amount of wildfires I feel like I done been in since I done been here. Been like, out, yeah. Yeah, bro, it's always, I'm always stuck in a wildfire on traffic or something like that down the five, bro. <laughs> it's just crazy, bro. Coming back to Bakersfield, shit, wow. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah, so, but, yeah. you know, okay, so now we go ahead and getting everything, but, 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 but before we get into the actual incident, tell me how your day was going. You know, how was your day going? Were you having a good day, bad day? You know, uh, let us know. Sue, so I was, man, <laughs> Like, all right, cause I'm more, I'm like, I'm a real to-do. Like, I like to be around my homies and stuff. Okay. So, like, my accident happened on New Year's Day. Oh. The day before, yeah, the day before oh. that, I was, I was like, I was talking to this chick, and, you know, we had just gotten a, like, an argument, like, the mm-hmm. night before we was at the homegirl house. Yeah. And, like, she just bullshit, she did some shit that just pissed me off. Bro, and, like, so, like, sometimes. I was like, leave <laughs> Yeah, bro. So like, okay. like I was I was pissed off. So, mm. so I was like, man, I'm about to have a bad New Year's. We already had this like day plan. Yeah. The homies, mm. the homies hit me up. Was like, hey, let's go to Roscoe's. And like that whole like we got there around like noonish. So like me waking mm. up to get out there. Shoot, I was feeling fresh. We was all on our bikes and stuff. I was I was cool. For real? But yeah, it was, yeah, the day Roscoe's, was good. Bro. Like, okay. yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So yeah. look. Y'all pull up the rock, a Roscoe chicken and waffles. What you eat? Do you remember what uh, you ate? Sure. I got the heck yeah, I got the Obama special with ah, the mac and cheese on the side. Okay, the extra two chicken. <laughs> okay, hey look, look. When I went there, I got the Obama special too. You baby. hey, see like it, yeah. all the black people get the Obama, bro. <laughs> Come on, bro. hey, but you know it's crazy. A lot of people like a lot of people that I'll go with now. They don't even yeah. really get it. Like they get like something okay. else, and then they get like the greens mm-hmm. and stuff. But shit, I stick bro, to the Obama bro, special you- with the mac and cheese on the side. Bro, because you can only get the Obama so many times, but you want to try something different. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, but but the Obama, it, it kind of just so happened to be like when you think about Roscoe chicken and waffles, that's the like it's really that's the what Obama. you get. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I see like, why everybody get the Obama, so I can see why somebody want to switch it up though. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. So y'all leaving the restaurant? Take me there. How was that scene looking like right there? So man, to be real with you. I only remember up to putting on my helmet mm. before. I I don't even remember leaving the parking lot to the accident. Damn. Yeah, so okay. yeah, okay. I remember like uh, I, I I was like we we was all my boys and mm-hmm. I had left my wallet at the house. So we okay. usually the way that we take, I, we wouldn't even have normally took that way. Okay, so this wasn't on the, the road freeway. that you normally be on. Yeah, so usually when we go places, we usually hop on a freeway. But since it was New Year's, we was like, man, let's chill. Let's, let's take the road, yeah. you know. Okay. And we Is was like, nighttime we during go back the day? to my house. During the day. This, so this is okay. around, I know for sure this is around noon because it was a picnic mm. that we was going to go to after. Okay. And that picnic started at like 2 o'clock. So, yeah. And it was great. I had just, I had talked to these girls for the homies because it was like a group of girls mm. that just got a number. Okay. okay. We was chilling at the bike. And okay, so you were moving like those. that. Hey, I was freshly single, bro. So I was like, 
<laughs> oh, oh, so you, ain't, I had just, you ain't telling us y'all broke up. You just say you, you, some BS. Type. Okay, so you first. Okay, so you yeah. first sing. Okay, yeah. So I was like, I was like, so all right. My accident happened New Year's. Mm-hmm. I had got out of the. Uh, I had got out of like this long relationship in October. Okay, so I got out of this long relationship, and then I just started doing my like, start doing my own thing, man. Mm-hmm. Like. You know, yeah, I know. How you feel. Mm-hmm. Fresh out of breakup, yeah. it's understandable, man. You good, you good. Trust me, I understand, yeah. bro. I understand. Okay, so <laughs> you say you don't remember anything after putting on your helmet, correct? Yeah, I don't remember anything okay. after, man. I just know from okay. the stories that my my boys told me. Okay, so your boys around you, how many of y'all uh is in this group? Uh, it was probably like six or seven of us writing. Okay, uh, okay, y'all kind of deep then. Time. Y'all kind of deep then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. So. Yeah. Okay, so what are the stories that you hear from them? So, all right, so we uh, we was headed down a street called Manchester. It's like okay. where the farm is. I know mm-hmm. a lot of people might know about the farm, so that's okay. where the farm is at. So we was actually approaching coming up on the farm and it's like this mm. big turn that you gotta make. And we we was the type of riders like we hit canyons and stuff, so we'll get low and stuff. Mm. But uh me shit, I was like, man, I'm all the stuff I was going through my head, man. I'm like, I'm just trying to have fun and like mm-hmm. like think about stuff. I'm I'm moving on the street like yeah, like going like 60, 70 miles per hour on the street mm-hmm. and uh come up on the turn. And as I'm coming up on the turn, my back of my tire lose traction on the road. So it's mm. so the whole bike uh the whole bike slid up under me. Okay. And they said that I tried to save the bike. As I tried to save the bike, the bike slid and hit a curve. And okay. then as it hit the curve, the bike went one way towards to the building and then I launched off the bike and went through a whole tree and like broke Damn. the tree in half. And, Damn. Yeah. And, and at that moment, are you still, you know, are you still out of it? I'm gone. Like, I'm I'm gone. I don't know. I don't remember nothing. And, you know, I I tried to have lunch with this lady because I, I, like, I really, like, gave my life to her because it was a lady that was, she was driving on the road Mm -hmm. and she was a nurse. And uh, she low-key the one that saved my life. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> which is crazy and uh her dude had found me while i was on a uh while i was in a hospital because it was it's like this instagram page that uh mm-hmm. posts like motorcycle accidents so okay. if somebody like something happened like you can check on the thing and a, her mm-hmm. dude actually saw that they posted about me he reached out to me and stuff i got to talk to her and everything but she mm-hmm. she was like she wasn't trying to meet up with nothing like that so I was like, oh for real she didn't want to meet up with you yeah, she. I, they was just like, it's cool. Like, Damn. I was like, I just, I just want to show my appreciation. At least, yeah, like, take yeah. y'all out to lunch or something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that's all crazy. I really wanted. I just wanted to talk to her, like, bro, and like, mm-hmm. and and get it. Just you know, yeah. Because if she wasn't, if she wasn't there, ain't no mm-hmm. telling what what could have happened to me, man. Like, mm-hmm. the ambulance. I know they would have took forever to get there and stuff. If she yeah. happened to be a nurse that just happened to be driving by and mm-hmm. seeing my accident. Ain't no telling yeah. if I would still be here. So okay, so you say that the lady and her husband they come up on you. Did they tell you yeah. what they did, or did you talk to them over the phone? Or uh, she said because uh, she said that she was like, well, I really talked to him more than I talked to her. Okay, and he was saying that she was like giving me CPR and oh. uh, yeah, like. It 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 it, it, it kind of got real deep. She, but yeah, she was giving me CPR. And she was mm-hmm. like keeping me in, like keep, like to me, I was knocked out. But to her, mm-hmm. she was like she was keeping me like keeping me going and stuff. At least until the ambulance mm-hmm. got there. Uh, and then yeah, because and then when the ambulance got there, they I read in my report that like I, I like coded out. So mm-hmm. yeah, damn, bro. So coded out meaning that you died. Yeah, that damn. that happened to me like four times throughout the whole process. For real? Yeah. Like, oh, damn. 
That's crazy. So so did they yeah. say why did they say why you end up dying or so they they didn't say why, but my 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 thing is I had I had internal bleeding, like I had to get chest oh. tubes. Um, okay. Yeah, they had to they had to mm. remove my spleen. Um, mm. Like Damn. my whole my testes, everything was swollen. Like it oh. was it was clog it was clogging up everything. So mm-hmm. that's probably why. But yeah, they said so. Like they said, I I coded out when I when the ambulance got when I was in the truck, mm-hmm. and then. When I was at the hospital, they had to do emergency surgery. They said I co- I coded out, and then they had to that's do like crazy. two more surgeries. And they, yeah, mm-hmm. so that's good. So, yeah, so it, I'm guessing, crazy. I'm guessing since they had to go on surgery, I'm pretty sure you got that big T across your your stomach. It's crazy. It's not even a T, bro. This this thing just goes straight down. It's like a big ass line, bro. It just go from the bottom of my chest all the way down, to, like to the bottom mm-hmm. of my stomach. They they What's told that? me it was supposed to get close to going away, but this thing don't look like it's ever. It's never you gonna come know, close bro. to going it, away. Man, it, bro, you don't know what it does a little bit. It does a little bit. A little, I mean, but I don't, bro. To be honest with you, I don't even really notice it like that. Like it ain't even that bad, bro. But I know it's there though. Okay, so you get to the hospital. You ain't conscious at this time. By the time you wake up, how long is this after your accident? 20 days. 20 days. Yeah. 20 days. So, so you was I in... I remember that. I, I in woke coma up January or you was 20th. in induced coma? I was, I was in an induced coma. Okay. And, like, they, they went back and forth. They went back during the whole coma. Like, they went back and forth mm-hmm. um, saying if I was going to live or not. Yeah, they they went from saying I was gonna make it to then I wasn't gonna make it to mm-hmm. I am gonna make it, but I'm gonna be dead. I'm gonna be brain dead mm-hmm. to the back time. I'm not gonna make it, and yeah. then luckily my yeah. mom just was like, "Man, we are gonna fight for it," and I ended up waking mm-hmm. up and shit. They were they thought I was like <laughs> they thought I was like crazy or so like that yeah. that uh when they yeah when I woke up and everybody like right there by me was like. Trying to talk to me like you understand what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. like y'all good. Yeah. Like, yeah. You I'm know good. what? They <laughs> thought the same thing with me too. They said that that it was a period of time that I that I didn't have oxygen going to my brain. So they said that if he if your son does yep. wake up, he might not be all the way there. So look, I'm look, yeah. I'm thankful for that, bro. So not only <laughs> am I thankful to be alive, bro, I'm thankful for that too, man. Cause shit, bro. You never know where I could be, bro. For, you never know where we yeah, could be. Yeah, facts. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> all right. So you wake up, your family's there. How is that like? So I woke, I woke up. Mm-hmm. Uh, I kind of knew what everything was going down, and it's crazy because I had a dream. Like when mm-hmm. I was in a coma, mm-hmm. I found out it was a dream once I woke up. But I, I knew that I was paralyzed from the dream I had. That's crazy. Like, I was going through therapy. Yeah, like, I was going through mm-hmm. therapy. I was doing stuff to try to get back walking and stuff. And, and it's all I in your dream? Up, uh, yeah, it's all in my dream. And it, it's crazy. Like, uh, uh, the way I woke up, uh, me is me, my boy. Well, he ain't my boy no more, but the, the mm-hmm. ex-homie KG. And then it was the other homie, Darnell, and his girl. We mm-hmm. was all at the store. And mm-hmm. this cop came up to me and was like, hey, are, are you Antonio? And I was like, yeah. He was like, you got to come with me because you're supposed to be at the hospital. Mm-hmm. And once that happened, like, I woke up. Like, it was it, it was crazy. So, like, that's crazy. Well, they, they had restraints on my, yeah, they had restraints on my wrist and everything mm-hmm. because they didn't want me to do no crazy movements when I woke mm-hmm. up. Yeah. And then I'm like, I'm like, y'all can take these off me. They was like, no, they don't want to because they don't want you to do nothing crazy. I was like, I know I'm paralyzed. Like I know they was like, how do you yeah. know this? Like you've been asleep this whole time, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's Ooh. crazy. That's crazy. So I already knew. Like when I had my dreams, I had a total of four dreams, right? And mm-hmm. on the very on the very last dream, right when I woke up, I was dreaming, but it was like I could see myself dreaming. And but I immediately mm-hmm. knew. I immediately knew in my dream, I just had a dream. So yeah. in my so bro in my dream, I come out and say, 
something ain't right, and that's when I wake up. Yeah, it, it's trippy, especially when you mm. see stuff like that in movies and stuff before like mm-hmm. you actually experience it. Yeah. You like, damn, like shit like that really be happening. Like, it's crazy, like when you tell people that the story and stuff, mm-hmm. and and people like they be they be like, what, like how did how did you experience that? Like, mm-hmm. it's yeah. Yeah, man. So. And then also, what's so crazy was that before my incident, I never been to California, ever, bro. I've never been to California, bro, ever. Like, I never even thought about coming to California. Like to me, and now you me, stuck bro, out here, <laughs> right, right, bro, bro. Like to me, California was like a dream place that really only rich people lived at, right. So I never in my yeah. life ever thought that I would come to California. But in, in one of the dreams I had. I was in a, bro, I was in a tattoo shop on Venice Beach, bro. And I swear, bro, it felt like <laughs> I had been there, bro, bro. And, and, yeah. the, and the only reason why I know, bro, is because I've, I've been to ben, I've been to Venice Beach now and I've seen the tattoo shops, bro. Uh-huh. This shit, is, bro, at the time, bro, in the dream, it felt like I had been there before. I knew for a fact I was on Venice Beach and I never been to Venice Beach. Right, only seen only seen Venice. So Beach you just in the already movies. had an image on how Venice Beach looked, and he exactly. never. That's crazy. Exactly, bro. Look, right. Look, and what's so crazy was I was dating somebody else that was a di- different ethnicity than my wife. Right, she was a Salvadorian. Uh-huh. Right, and, and yeah, cassette, and my wife right now she's Mexican. At the time, man, I told you I'm dating somebody else, it's totally different. Not even thinking about Cassandra. Right, bro. Uh-huh. I'm in there getting. A matching tattoo, and the person that I'm getting a matching tattoo with, I can't see, right? I can't, like, I cannot see that person. But we're getting a California bear tattooed on us, and and, and the inside of the bear is a Mexican flag. I'm not Mexican, but I'm Puerto Rican. And remember, I told (laughs) you, the the, the girl girl, with the time, yeah, yeah, bro, it don't, it doesn't make sense, bro. It didn't, it didn't. (laughs) And then at, at that time, crazy. bro, at that time, Cassandra lived in California. Yeah. You feel me? Bro, so that's... that's, that's but that never crazy. even crossed your mind because you ain't bro. never even thought about... That's fucking crazy. That's, that that's shit was wild. crazy, bro. So I might have to go ahead and make that... Make that dream. <laughs> yeah, actually get that... Reality. <laughs> and we might have to go to Venice Beach and get Mexican <laughs> tattoos with a bear on it. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. yeah. It, yeah. it happened for a reason. Like, that's exactly. crazy, bro. It's crazy, yeah. bro. Okay. Okay, so you wake up, your family there. What is that environment like? You know, like what they saying? How you feeling? Like, what's that like? So, <sighs> me, uh, the, I mean, the environment is like real sad. Like everybody, everybody mm-hmm. was trying to like, everybody was trying to like be there for me and stuff. But you can yeah. tell like. You could tell how it was hitting everybody, and mm-hmm. as much because I'm I'm a strong person. Like I don't like to eat. when I'm down, I'm always smiling. Like I I don't like to show that like something is bothering yep. me or something's yep. hurting me. Too. Me. me too. So, so yeah. So when I when I when I was in there, like man, I was I was. I was, I was fucked up. Like I was like, bro, like mm-hmm. everything in my life is about to change. Like mm-hmm. so, but I'm I'm showing like I'm smiling and stuff. Like I'm I'm mm-hmm. trying to be happy with everything. And okay. then three days of being in the hospital, the girl I just told you, like I was I was messing around with after my mm-hmm. after the serious relationship, I was messing around with her. Mm-hmm. Uh, she came she came to the hospital, and she told me she was pregnant. So what? that that fucked me up even more. Yeah, like I was That's I was crazy. fucked up. I was like, bro, I'm about to have a kid, Ooh. and I'm about to deal with this whole thing of being in a in a, in a wheelchair. Mm-hmm. I called my dad and like had a talk with him. I was like, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. Mm-hmm. I was like, That's y'all are in this hospital taking care of me. How I'm gonna take care of a whole kid? Mm-hmm. And and she and then. A couple of days later, after that, because she told me she was uh, supposed to be having an appointment, mm-hmm. she uh, she ended up having a miscarriage because of her stress and of me being in the hospital. Damn, bro. So yeah, that, so it man. was Sorry like it, it was, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it was just back to back stuff happening, yeah. man. It, yeah. Okay, so you wake up. Are you in any pain at the time? Uh, when I when I woke up, mm-hmm. 
I can't remember. I I okay. I don't think I was really in pain, but I know mm-hmm. like I I could barely move like type stuff like because yeah, my body too. was just like yeah, I was barely able to move. It felt like mm-hmm. everything was just so sluggish. Yeah. At a, at a point in time, I couldn't even see. I couldn't even. Everything was blurry in my eyes. Like I couldn't really mm-hmm. see that good. Uh, yeah. And but I know after I had my spinal surgery, that shit was the worst pain ever. Yeah, that For real. You oh damn. See, I didn't have no surgery. Like I didn't have no surgery at all. So, yeah, they had to. Uh, I like I got like a little small rod in my back. Oh. So, so they had to put it yeah, in so they had to stabilize it, stabilize my spine, yeah. Okay, because okay, since since they were trying to keep me alive, mm-hmm. they had to take care of all that other stuff before they even got to my spine. Okay, so that makes sense. That I didn't have sense. spinal surgery. Yeah, I didn't have spinal surgery until like until like two weeks after waking up. Mm, okay, so, so they probably just wanted it to heal straight. If it was gonna heal, it might as well heal straight. So they just stabilized it until until that surgery, probably. Yeah. All right. So on a scale from one to ten, what is that pain like? Yeah, <laughs> when I got out the mm-hmm. when they woke me up in surgery, bro, that shit yeah. was on like fifteen. For real? I was like, oh. bro, y'all gotta give me, yeah. And it, and it, and they could even give me med. They could even give me pain medication, like right after. Like I was just in the bed, like mm-hmm. because I forgot why they said they couldn't. Why they couldn't give mm-hmm. it to me right away? But I was like, that shit is hurting. Probably and has something to do with your blood pressure. It, yeah. So, le- luckily, like I think yeah. like an hour later, they ended up giving me some pain meds, and mm-hmm. then they had me hooked up to this machine to where when pain will come, I just press a button. And that oh, motherfucker would just shoot him up. Oh, you yeah, had that morphine drip. You had take... that drip. What? Okay, okay. Instantly, okay. instantly yeah. took, <laughs> yeah, instantly took the pain away, bro. Yeah, but okay. I, I started because I didn't, I didn't want to be hooked on like, like pain mm-hmm. meds. So like, I started like, when the pain will come, I'll try to deal with it as much as I could. Mm-hmm. Yeah, before I would I had to use that machine. Mm-hmm. And then I'll use the machine, but then like I, I ended up getting off the machine like a week after surgery because I was like, yeah, I know I just yeah I was I was like this is this this is taking away the pain too easy. I know this is yeah. gonna be crazy trying to mm-hmm. yeah. So. At first, I ain't gonna lie. At first, I ain't really I ain't really trying to take any pain medication, bro. I felt man, like to be honest, bro. In a way, I it felt like I just wanted to just deal with the pain. At first, but then yeah. I, I, but then I ended Probably. up taking pain medication like later on. But at first, bro, I really just sat there and just really dealt with the pain. Like I was like, man, if I could deal with this, bro, I could deal with anything. And it was like, I ain't gonna lie, it was really yeah. uncomfortable. It was really uncomfortable, but it was just, I don't know, bro. I guess I was just taking it out on myself. Okay, yeah, so it's it's real uncomfortable, <laughs> especially when they ask you in pain and you over here lying to them that you got in pain, but Hell you really yeah. like, man. Hell yeah, man. And it's weird, bro. Like, I don't know, man. I don't know. I guess we just, I guess us as humans, we find ways to justify certain things in our minds. And it was like, bro, it was Uh like at that time, at that time, I was justifying it with my reasoning. And I ain't gonna lie, bro. That shit felt like it was like, all right, this is really what it is. Like, you know what I mean? Like, this is the truth. But then looking back on it, bro, I'm delusional, bro. Like, you feel me? I'm like out of it. You feel me? So I should have. Yeah. I should have just said I was hurting. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So okay. So <laughs> you you uh you get the the spinal surgery three days after waking up. What's the healing process like from well, there? Uh, shoes, man. They uh they ended up moving me out of uh ICU. Okay. And um, I, how was I, like, your ICU my experience? My... Man, I hated that. Sh- I I hated it, bro. It was like you couldn't really get no sleep because you got people next to nope. you that's loud and eruptions, yep. and it's I hated it, bro. Like, yeah, I, yep. worse experience. Like, I hate hospitals. I hate hospitals now, bro. Yeah, like when I gotta go to the hospital, yeah, I'll be like, man. This some bull. Bro, yeah. yeah, it was the worst I, experience ever. I don't know if this interview came out yet, but I had an interview with somebody, and we like he literally confirmed 
exactly like how I felt, bro. It was it was literally the worst place to be at night. It was like I literally feared the nighttime because that's when people would come in really messed up. I wouldn't see the people, bro, but eventually yeah. you would hear their families come in screaming, people crying, screaming, bro. Screaming, yeah. yeah. Bro, and it was, bro, I'm not going to lie, bro. bro. It was, I had the craziest nightmares in there dealing with that, bro. I still feel like I deal with that shit to this day. Bro, at that time, I didn't, like, when I was when I was in there, bro, I didn't have, mm-hmm. like, my phone and my headphones with me mm-hmm. at nighttime. So, like, mm-hmm. I was able to hear, like, I, de- I dealt with somebody being stabbed up in there. Somebody dying from being shot up in there, like, mm-hmm. is and like you, like you said, you hear all the family members, you hear like mm-hmm. the, the nurses and then everybody going yeah. crazy, bro. Mm-hmm. And it, and it was, it was like nighttime was the worst. It'd be like during the day, it, it seemed kind of cool, yeah. and then at nighttime, it just go. It's like a whole different atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. so you wake up. What types of machines are you are you on? Like, I like the big ones, like. Do you have a trach in your neck? Are you on a feeding tube? Nah, How's so, that like? so when I when I woke, I had a feeding tube and I had a feeding tube. In so when nose? I woke up, I wasn't able to talk. I had to, uh, I I it was it was in my mouth, like okay. it was like it was going down. Yeah, it was going th- down my throat. Okay. But uh, so yeah, when I woke up, I had to write literally write everything I need to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, to to my family and stuff, and then yep. uh, I didn't get a trike, and because I I didn't they they kept suggesting it to me, but I didn't want mm-hmm. to, so like I wasn't able to talk. And when I woke up, that's when they was talking about giving it to me because mm-hmm. they they were saying like I wasn't breathing how I yeah. should be. Um, uh, mm-hmm. I'm surprised I'm like writing. Yeah, they did ask my mom, and I'm writing okay. to my mom. I'm like, no, like I want to fight this. Like I don't want no trike. And mm-hmm. my mom called. She had like her one of her friends is a doctor, or her husband is a doctor, and he telling her like they suggest you to get that. You should get it, like, and all of this mm-hmm. stuff. And she was literally about to. She was literally about to tell him like go ahead and do it. Mm-hmm. And luckily, like I convinced her not to, and I didn't end up having to do it. Like I ended up okay. fighting through it and being able to. Being able to do it without it, so. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. So you you see, look, bro. I still got the I still got the scar. Yeah, the, yeah. You see it? You see it? Yeah, yours actually small though. Like, yeah, it wasn't that, bro. I ain't gonna lie, bro. That shit was that shit was hell, man. Like, just think about like there's a big hole in your neck, and there's a tube in that hole. Yeah, and this is for the people that don't know. So pretty much a trait. I I believe that they do a trait. To really get you oxygen quick, right? Yeah. So yeah. So I think that's the quickest way for them to really get you oxygen. So they they did that, and bro, when when I say when they had to clean it out, it felt like it was like a wire, like and bro, it was. I would literally be there not being able to breathe, and then they'd be like, "Do you want us to clean thing?" I'd be like, "Bro," because if it, it was so, it was the nastiest feeling in the world when they would like like it was like. It was like a tube, and then like the tube had like a like a like a bag with like a wire in it, and then the, uh-huh. like they would push it in there and like do it like that. Bro, that shit, shit was crazy, and that shit was always popping out, bro. It was always pop, bro. That shit was, bro. My dad, my dad came in the room one night. He was crying, bro. He went to go like give me a hug and stuff like that. He gave me a hug, bro. That shit pop out. I'm like, oh my, bro. <laughs> I'm like, bro. bro, it would just pop out, bro. And then like I feel like I can't breathe. The machine start going off. <laughs> then the doctors come up in there really fast. You know what I mean? Like hook it back up, bro. But bro, that shit was always <laughs> popping out. But like it wouldn't pop up my neck. It was like a connector piece that it popped off. That that yeah. kept popping out, bro. But that shit always popped out. All the time, bro. That shit was weird. See, yeah, yeah man, I did not want to deal with that, that stuff, bro. I was like, <laughs> yeah, man. I, I was like, I'm about to try to fight this. Yeah, bro, shit was horrible. And then I had a breathing, I mean, not a breathing tube. I had the trach in my throat and I had the feeding tube in my nose. So, bro, it felt, yeah, it was like a drip and it dripped in the back of my throat. And That's then, probably why they couldn't, yeah, they probably couldn't do it, do yours through your mouth because you had. <laughs> Cause you already had your trike don't going through your your throat, mm-hmm. so yeah, that's probably what they had to do to do yeah. it through your nose. And then I couldn't drink anything for like three weeks, bro. 
Like, cause, cause they didn't want me to catch pneumonia, but my mom would sneak me like water here and there because they would give me a, only a cup of ice. They would only give me a cup of ice, bro. I, bro, just think about three weeks not being able to drink anything. Bro, just imagine how how dry your lips is. You feel me, bro? My lips all bro. crusty, crusty and shit, bro. Mouth dries, bro. She was horrible. She was horrible, bro. When I woke up, not even though I had a feeding tube in my mouth, bro. Mm-hmm. I, I wrote to my brother. I was like, can you sneak and give me a Gatorade? Like, I, hey. Not even though as I came in. Nah, I, hey, I, man, I was bro. the same way. I was the same way, bro. I was always trying to get some, bro. That, that's why I drink so much water now. Because all I wanted was just some water, bro. I was like, yeah. Man, if it's anything, I just want some water. And I would wait. I would wait for the ice to melt. Right, because remember they wouldn't give Seriously. me nothing to drink, but I would wait for the ice yeah. melt, and then I would drink that, bro. And it tasted so good. I was like, man, I'm gonna drink water forever, bro. And to this day, bro, I, <laughs> bro, I probably drink like four or five bottles of water a day. Like, I just, yeah. I just genuinely love water, bro. I drink water with almost any, like everything. Like, I love water, bro. It's crazy. It's crazy. My favorite alkaline yeah. water, though. I, I like alkaline water now. Yeah, I I I be I got my little jug that I be drinking. My I, mm-hmm. I make sure I like drink like two two times a day. But mm-hmm. that's with that yeah. alkaline water, bro. That alkaline water fire. <laughs> yeah, I, I I like that uh that um oh, what's that dang water called? Uh, it's like a blue cap. I, core. It's core? called core. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I like core. I like that's core. I like that. Yeah, okay. That's All right. Yeah. All right. Bet so. So from the time, okay. So you said that they move you from the ICU to a different floor, all right. Mm-hmm. How long is it from the time that they move you to that floor? How long is it until they get you in and out of a wheelchair? Bro, I didn't touch a wheelchair until I got to uh, inpatient therapy. Damn, you know what? Probably yeah. because probably because you had a spine surgery. Maybe yeah. I'm guessing they. <laughs> Even when I got to inpatient therapy, yeah, I didn't touch a wheelchair probably till like a week after being in there. Like okay, they had so to how, make. How long was it till you got to inpatient therapy then? So, um, I was I was in a regular hospital for two months. Okay, from, from my accident, you know, until I was in there for two months, okay. and then I did inpatient therapy for a month. Okay. Uh, so, but I was I was on bed rest and the inpatient therapy. Like they had me doing they had me doing therapy stuff, but I was doing it from the bed. Oh, okay, okay, it makes sense. Yeah, yep. since they had to make sure it like my, my 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 spine and everything was good before mm-hmm. they was moving me in and out of it. Okay, okay. So I actually want to kind of rewind right quick. Uh, um, when this is probably gonna be around the time that you wake up. How do the doctors come to you and tell you that you got a spinal cord injury? What did they actually say to you? Bro. They, they ain't tell me shit. They ain't tell me nothing, bro. It bro, was shit. like... You know, so when I woke up, right? Mm-hmm. They, they they already didn't tell me like I was paralyzed. Yeah. They actually, so I had a, I had a, a catheter, I had a, a, mm-hmm. a catheter, right? Mm-hmm. They removed that, thinking, I mean, trying to, it was like for me to try to pee throughout the whole day, bro. Mm-hmm. So like, I didn't, I damn near didn't pee the whole day because I didn't have the catheter. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, so when I when I went to therapy, I mean, when I went into the, they told me like, they told me the reason why I wasn't peeing, I wasn't able to move my leg that time is because I needed mm-hmm. surgery. I need okay. a spinal surgery. Okay. So when I got out of this, uh, when I got out of surgery, they was like they wanted to wait like a week before they could tell if I was gonna be able to mm. to be able to walk again and stuff. So like they didn't even they didn't tell me I was paralyzed. They just made it seem like they they just made it. Seem, I, I I I'm thinking they were trying to keep me like keep hope in me. Mm-hmm. So like they didn't tell me. Yeah, like they they yeah. they downplayed they down they downplayed it. I'm thinking like I'm about to get out of this damn bed and end up walking out of this damn hospital, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and that's yeah. not the yeah. So yeah, okay. So I mean, like to me, me personally, like I would have had, I would have wanted to know. All right, yeah. the way how I kind of put two and two together 
was they're doing stuff down there and I can't feel it. Yeah. And, and I'm just, you know what I mean? And it's just like, like, bro, my paralyzed? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, especially... Like, Especially when they come in there every day and they over here rubbing your like to see if you get mm-hmm. if they if they if you gonna get a reaction out of them doing it. Yeah. It's like, bro, like I see y'all doing this. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. just be they real with me, like, yeah, they, they should be a little bit more upfront. Like, like they should tell you what happened. Now, should they tell you that you paralyzed and you're never gonna walk again? I don't believe that they should tell you that because you know. Yeah. At that moment, everybody's situation different. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then at that moment, you have a wave of emotions, you know, that you never know how anybody might react. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. so I and then I also heard later down the line that they can't tell you that you're gonna walk again because then they can be held liable and then you could sue them yeah. if, if you don't walk again. So I, so I think they just don't say like I think they just say like if they do tell you, I believe they say that you might be able to walk again or, or yeah. Or something like that. I don't know. Um, but yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So you get to inpatient therapy. What's that like? Is uh, so I mean, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't really fuck with none of this shit, bro. Like, yeah. I uh, most of us ain't. I, I didn't. I was a. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't trying to do none of this shit. Like they, they kept. Mm-hmm. They, it was a struggle for them to get me up out of that bed to go do therapy. Bro, me too. <laughs> like me too. the dude, the, the 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 therapist would sit there and talk to me. Uh, the uh, occupational therapist, like mm-hmm. she would come in and she'll do stuff with me. And, like she was real chill. Like I was real cool with her. Mm-hmm. And like I, I I was able to open up to her and let her know like everything I was going through. Like I felt comfortable with her, mm-hmm. but. I hate it. Like I didn't. I never wanted to get up. Like I used to call my mom, like crying. Like I used to cry and be like, "Don't leave." Like I, I hate. Like it was after being in the ICU and stuff like that. Like yeah. I hated. I hated it. I never wanted. I, I didn't want to be there at nighttime. And then right when I like get my mind right to start doing it, mm-hmm. one of my close homies passed away. Damn. So yeah, so it was like that shit done put me right back where I was, and yeah. it, it it was tough, bro. Like mm-hmm. that that whole yeah. thing, the whole thing I went through was tough, and it it, it was crazy. And that's how I was telling you, like mm-hmm. this is like this is like because I got out March 9th. My birthday is on March tenth, mm-hmm. and it was like a couple of days before I was supposed to get out. My sister, my older sister, sends me. Like a video of you and your wife, y'all did like a, y'all did like this. I think it was like a inter, y'all did like an interview or video for some company, for true, but it was it on was, Facebook. Was, oh, oh, okay. It was Barcroft TV, which is now True <laughs> TV. Yeah, it was on Facebook. Like I didn't okay. even know about your YouTube channel. It was on Facebook, mm-hmm. and I and I'm like watching it and stuff. Uh, and she was like, "Cause I'm like, man, I, I'm in my head, like I'm like, man, I ain't gonna never have another chick." Yeah, uh, I just damn near lost the, the chick that I probably could have had. Mm-hmm. So I, I was like, I was going through it, and I was like, man, I ain't gonna be able to do none of this shit I'm doing. And mm-hmm. she sent me your video, and I was like, that's crazy. And I started watching your, I was start watching your YouTube videos and stuff, bro. Mm-hmm. And the way you was feeling on how, like, because you would say it a couple of times, like, you don't like to be too open about everything that you was going through, mm-hmm. but. To see that you were still doing it was like, damn, like, I, man, I ain't no bitch. I need to really do this. Like, that, mm-hmm. that's not bro, me. It was so. my wife, bro. For, bro, it was, for, for real, for real, it was Cassandra. She yeah. really, she really pushed me to really do the videos that I didn't want to do, you know? Mm-hmm. And I ain't gonna lie, she still, she still take credit for it. You know what I mean? Like, she be like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, she, she'd tell me, like, I'm the one that got you doing, you know, those types of videos. But at the but at the time, bro, I just I didn't realize that you know me doing this would actually be helping people out, you know, yeah. like like yeah, I re- like I really didn't I really didn't I really didn't understand it. But then when I understand it, and I just realized, bro, this is so much bigger than me. There are people out here that are watching my videos that don't know how to do certain stuff. Then they contact me, and then you know I tell them what to do. They do it, and then they be like, "Thank, bro, I really appreciate it, man. You helped me get my bow. 
I bow kid down, Pat man. I appreciate it, bro. And bro, cause I know what it felt like to get my independence back whenever I did that. And I was like, man, man. I I know when if somebody if somebody hits me up and tells me, bro, I need help with this, bro. They literally have to put their pride, ego, everything to the side and ask this person, oh, that. Yeah. bro. Just asking somebody, so another man asking another man something is it's kind of like a ego and pride thing, period. But to ask them that, yeah, bro, is it? It touches, bro. That's bro. That's why, man. That's why, man. Every time we talk, like I don't know if you understand. If you understand how many times I'll be telling you, like I appreciate you, bro. Like because What's up? why, like, like you, like you really like you really like help me like be able to do the shit that I'm able to do now, like, bro. I, yeah. I don't, I don't. I don't know how my mindset would be if it wasn't for seeing y'all videos and even you like still you and Cassandra even still replying back to me like I could be some random ass motherfucker mm-hmm. that's just mm-hmm. reaching out to y'all y'all can be yeah. ignoring the fuck out of me god dang mm-hmm. uh but but y'all what y'all wasn't like that bro like mm-hmm. and I appreciate that like that that no that problem, it do come a long way it, it come no a long problem, way bro. I know I know hey man. We, we, me and you done met, you feel me? We done met you to came yeah. to my house, you feel me? You know what I mean? So yeah. I definitely look I That's definitely sure, look forward bro. for our friendship to evolve in the future, my man. For real, for real. And yeah. like I said, bro, yeah. you say you appreciate me, bro. I appreciate you because all this really does is just solidify that what I did was for a reason. Like I said, you know, yeah. there's people out there that needed to see this. And you saying that you someone that needed to see it, bro. I it's like it's like I'm seeing what Cassandra was telling me, bro. Like, like, you, yeah. like, 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 I'm seeing it by talking to you. Like, so that's, yeah. that's crazy in itself. You know what I mean? So look, mm-hmm. I appreciate you for real, for real. <laughs> like, like, for, I yeah. really do, bro. I really do. I really do, my man. So, okay. What's that moment like when you first get in a wheelchair? How does that feel for you? When I when I low key got in, when I first got in the wheelchair, man, they mm-hmm. took me outside, man. Mm-hmm. It felt like it felt like the world, bro. Like for real, it 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 wasn't even a weird experience, bro. Just to be outside and get that sun and everything, bro. It felt like it low key felt like I was in jail, like been in the hospital that long. So to get outside mm-hmm. and, and I wasn't even thinking about the chair and stuff. Like yeah, I was just just to be outside and everything, bro. It was like. Mm-hmm. It felt amazing, and even even now, bro. Like I, I love when it's sunny, and I, my mom always be like, "Why are you just sitting up there up under the sun and stuff?" Like, it's yeah. like it feel good. Like I, I love mm-hmm. it now. Like, mm-hmm. and so okay. yeah, when I first got in the chair, it was it was it was cool. It wasn't it wasn't bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, shoot. Okay, I ain't, I ain't really had no. It's just okay. it's just me want to do shit to get better and like mm-hmm. I didn't want to put in that work. That was that was the only thing that was like stopping mm-hmm. me. What's that one thing that you that you just couldn't wait to do? Drive. I give you an example. Drive. Yeah. Okay, bro. My Driving bro, was the first thing. Mine's what I just wanted to shower. That's it. See. Yeah, I, but because when I was did you, did did you shower when you was in uh when you was in inpatient therapy? I finally showered then, but for the longest time, bro. I couldn't oh, shower. you were saying while you was in a hospital that mm-hmm. you did? Okay, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that yeah yeah that was a good one. Yeah, because yeah, when I when they did let me go, I, I felt like I wanted to take a damn shower every time after they didn't <laughs> give me that first yeah. shower. Yeah. Hell yeah. 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 Bro, they so, yeah, didn't that... give me a shower, bro. They just came in there and like wiped me down with some. I think they put some foam on my body and just wiped it. You know what I mean, like, bro. Just oh, imagine bro, they... doing that for weeks, bro. Yeah, they put me on like this <sighs> thing boat. They like they had like this inflatable thing that they put up under me. It was like a boat, bro. Okay. <laughs> and they that's how they like got me to the shower, like sat me in the shower, mm-hmm. and it was, I was able to take a shower like that. So yeah, okay, okay, okay. So. From the time you get up to the time you leave the hospital, how long is that process? Uh, so it was three. Uh, so like the hospital and inpatient therapy, like yeah, when I was uh-huh. able to go home. 
Mm-hmm. It was it was three months. Do you feel like you learned what you needed to learn in order to take you home, or what do you feel? Hell no, nah, man. Hell no. Nah. Mm-hmm. Maybe I didn't learn as much because I was being reluctant on like trying to learn everything. Yeah, but like I. I learned how I learned how to get my clothes off watching your videos. For real, I learned how to I learned how to drive by myself. My boy worked. Mm-hmm. Luckily, he worked at like a a place that do the hand control and stuff. He stole mm-hmm. hand controls for okay. me and came into my house and installed them. Yeah, That's came dope. to my house and installed them. That's and, a true friend right I, there. I just I just have to, man. That's a man. What? Yeah, because yeah. them things. <laughs> cost some bread, so Not cheap, yeah. he he came and installed them and everything. Yeah, but I just hopped in the car and learned how to drive by myself. Um, mm-hmm. transferring, it, it. I mean, they they teach you how to transfer, but it's like mm-hmm. I feel like that's kind of stuff that everybody had to learn and see yeah. find their own way on how to do stuff. Yeah. So like I, feel like, I feel like they it, only. He taught me a, a a sliding board transfer. They didn't teach me to transfer. Yeah, yeah, transfer that was the only now. thing. Like, yeah, yeah, and even like using a sliding board, like it that that shit is so sketchy. Like using a sliding yeah, board to bro, transfer, it is, like, bro, bro, it's sketchy as hell. Bro. It's sketchy. Hell, yeah. it's sketchy I'm... trying to use a sliding board. Yeah, so yeah, like, weird. yeah, that that was that was they way of teaching me how to transfer, okay. even like. When I'm laying, like, if you laying down, how to get up? Mm-hmm. They had some dudes. They had a dude show me how to how to get up. Like, and he was even though he was in a wheelchair, mm-hmm. he was able to like move his legs and stuff. So like, he had okay. more control. Like my injury yeah. at the time, my injury, I I didn't have no feeling like right below my chest. Mm-hmm. So I didn't have nothing. I didn't have no ab control or nothing. So oh. the way I was able to learn, man, yeah. yeah, the way I learned how to get up is like I'm in the house, and like mm-hmm. some will fall on the floor, so I would have to like ain't nobody really at home, so I'm like had to get I had to figure out a way to get up on my own. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. the, I feel like the way that some of the people like the, they would teach you is like it was it it's not for everybody. Like yeah, so yeah. It, it okay. was a lot of stuff that I had to learn on my own and stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. What do you feel like has been the hardest thing that you had to overcome since you've been in a wheelchair? Pissing on myself. Okay. Do you yeah. feel like Do you feel like that it was like that because they didn't teach you anything, or why? Like, why, like mm-hmm. what makes you say that? I mean, it is. It's. Cause we all go through it, bro. Because Look, like, we all go through. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. it's it's me having to wear a diaper everywhere. Like okay, that me yeah like uh, like if I if I meet a girl or something and we go out mm-hmm. or something, I can't really like like do what I want to do with her because like yeah. I'm wearing this diaper that might got pee inside of it most of the time. Mm-hmm. Most of the time it do. So mm-hmm. like I wasn't like. That was that's part of the only thing that 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 was like tough for me to overcome, and luckily, like I'm just I just now get it, just got that under control, and I'm four years deep into this, into okay. being in the wheelchair. Mm-hmm. So, is yeah. it was crazy. I was I constantly was getting UTIs, um, yeah. and constantly paying on myself. So, yeah. yeah, that was that was a hard thing to overcome. Yeah, it took me it took me about two years. It took me about two years right. to really start catherine on a regular to where I was on a schedule, cause bro, I w- I just I just couldn't picture myself doing that, you know. Yeah. Like, even though yeah. even though I couldn't feel it, bro, it just it just did not feel right. So like yeah. it was like I would feel from it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even then it would feel like you doing it a lot. Like mm-hmm. even though we probably do it like four or five times a day, which is yeah. normal. Like. You think about yeah. it like you go and pee like four or five times a day. It feel like, bro, I just catheter. Why the fuck am I having to catheter again? So like, exactly. Yeah, it exactly. was. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it, it's a lot of stuff that come in with that. Nah, I feel you. I feel. I, yeah. bro, I, I, bro, I guess I was. I was really just being hard headed, man. But 
I wish I would have got it together like a lot sooner, you know, because that does help you with your independence. And like you said, you know, you wanted to go meet a girl, bro. And shit, man, like, bro, I had to wear diapers too. So I trust me, I understand that feeling of wearing a diaper, but then I under, but then I understand that feeling of going from the diaper, bro, back to some boxers, bro. Like I could, bro, I just could yeah. not wait, bro. And <laughs> it was one of the greatest yeah. feelings ever. Like for real, bro. I brought all, bro. I look, I brought all polo draws, bro. That's it. I was like, you know what? Yeah, bro. Look, I was like, bro, ain't nothing touching this butt but the best. You feel me? <laughs> bro, I brought See, bro, bro, yeah. I brought all, bro. And them polo draws is hella uncomfortable. Now I only rock the good fellow bro. They're nice and soft, bro. Good fellow boxes from Target. Bro, they soft. Trust me, bro. Them boxer Man. briefs. Them the boxer briefs. They need to the sponsor I, I, the channel. I understand, it's true. It's uh it, it, <laughs> they do <laughs> look so <laughs> look, uh but yeah i just i feel you bro because like when i like when i first like figured like when they f- talking to my doctors getting everything done mm-hmm. to where i i'm now i don't i'm not urinating on myself bro mm-hmm. that when that when that first time happened that I'm looking at my diaper like damn ain't no piss in this motherfucker like mm-hmm. it shit feel good like like I'm yeah. not urinating on myself and me I I'm able to feel when I'm about to urinate on myself like mm-hmm. it, it's it's kind of it's kind of weird but like I'm able okay. to feel like I like I get like a cramp or something in my stomach or something mm-hmm. and that's how I know I'm about to I'm about to urinate on myself okay. but to know like I ain't about to do that and it's mm-hmm. it's a that good shit feeling for, like the world. Yeah, bro, yeah, and I'm telling you, bro. I know it's a good feeling when you could throw in them boxers and you could throw away them damn fucking diapers, bro. <laughs> like, bro, I, bro, I couldn't wait, bro. Like, man, bro, just just thinking about it takes me back to that time, bro. And it, just, yeah. bro, it was really, it was really a shitty time for me, bro. So trust me, yeah. I know, I understand what you're going through, bro. Because w- w- once you get to graduate from them, the diapers, because you. You automatically feel like, damn, I'm a grown man, bro. I should not be wearing diapers. You know what I mean? But once yeah, you get facts. to go back to that and get that independence, bro, it's such a good feeling, man. It is, bro. It's, yeah. it's, it's really it's really overwhelming, bro. But it's just, bro, you just look forward to it. You know, you, you know, like, like, bro, I'm always checking. I always check. I Look, I check, like, probably, like, three times during this interview, even though I calved, like, yeah. probably, like, an hour ago. But, you know, I still always check, you know, but... At the it's same a subconscious time, thing. You, yeah, you look, do stick it. to the schedule, bro. That's what I tell you about. You stick yeah. to the schedule, you should be straight. All right? You stick to the schedule, mm-hmm. you should be all right. So, okay. Yeah. Okay, so. That's a, you, that's a fact. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you get out the hospital. How you feeling at that moment? Mm-hmm. Uh, Shoot, I was low-key ready. I was, I was happy to be home. Like, mm-hmm. I, I was happy to be with my family. I was... I was happy I ain't had to deal with with having roommates that mm-hmm. smell like shit and yeah. being just getting screaming and want to give nurses problems for no reason. Like mm-hmm. I was just I was just happy to be out that environment, man. Like Oh damn, you would have hated me as a roommate, bro. I was the one that was giving the nurses <laughs> the problems, bro. I was <laughs> arguing with them. Like we was catching bro, bro, because they bro, they was sketchy. They was sketchy, bro. Like, nah, it, it do. You do have some nurses that just don't be giving a fuck. Like, yeah, they they they, they they just do the job just to make their money. Like, they ain't really yeah. get care there to actually give a fuck. It do be those mm-hmm. nurses, but it do be some pay like just like it be some of them nurses. It be some mm-hmm. patients that they just wake up want to give them fucking problems and shit. Like, oh hell yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I look, I might have been guilty <laughs> that once or twice. <laughs> but but if I but 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 if I was doing something, bro, I had a reason, bro. Like like you know what I mean. Like they would be giving me a new medication. They wouldn't tell me why they was giving me a new medication. And then I found out I got an uh-huh. infection. I'm like, bro, why why y'all not telling me I got this infection? You feel me? You, like yeah. like bro, like what, like what? Like bro, like see that's the sketchy stuff I'm talking about. You feel me? Like how you I'm, gonna I'm put glad me I ain't. I, me? Yeah, I'm glad I ain't done deal with that. And I I know somebody mm-hmm. that's still he. He just got out of the hospital from having a, a pressure sore, mm-hmm. and he switched hospitals mid do mid like mid his treatment because mm-hmm. the stuff he was going through like that. So I'm, I'm glad yeah, I ain't never had to deal with that. Hell nah, bro. You don't want to, bro. You don't want to. Hey, hey look, <laughs> do your push ups. Do your push ups. You feel me? Look, you should be straight. You should be straight. Okay, yeah. so 
Okay, so you get out the hospital. You go to your parents' house. You go to your house. Yeah, so Where you go? well, I, I had a, uh, I had to move back in with moms, uh, okay, because I didn't really have nobody to help me out and stuff. Mm-hmm. And my mom and my sister, well, my sister lives with my mom, so it was most of them two that would be helping me out. So okay, I moved, back, I moved back in with moms, and okay. uh, yeah, I was, what was that transition like? I was, how was it? How was it moving? Because I'm guessing her house is a handicap accessible, right? Hell no, not one bit. Okay, okay, so not one bit. Moving like, back, I'm barely move, able to get oh inside the kitchen. Like, oh damn, yeah, I'm barely able to get inside the kitchen at her house. Okay. And then at that time, I had the hospital chair, so you know Ooh, that chair was like wild. big and lumpy. Yeah, 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 bro. So like, and you had to make like so many turns just to get inside the door. Yeah. Like, Trust yeah, me, it was, mm-hmm. yeah, okay. Okay, so it was, it was bad. You you get to your mom's house and her house isn't wheelchair accessible. Neither was my parents, but my fa- but my my parents' floor plan was kind of open. But trust me, it wasn't it wasn't uh-huh. handicapped accessible because we had stairs. We had stairs to get in the house. All right. So, what yeah. do you feel like your biggest obstacle was when it came to moving in with your mom and her house not being accessible for you? So, by me knowing, like, how accessible it was, bro, I stayed mm. in my room the whole time. Okay. Like, I wasn't really trying to go nowhere, mm-hmm. especially because it, t- it took him, like, four months just to give me my, my regular chair. So, God, like, uh, yeah, so, like, I wasn't trying to, I wasn't trying to go nowhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, I stayed in my room while I, I ended up getting, like, this little couch in my, just in my room just so mm-hmm. I'll, I'll be able to get out of the bed and just sit in the couch. So yeah, because if I try to go outside, it's like yeah. at this time we didn't even have a ramp, so like we had to go. My mom or my sister would be helping me up mm-hmm. up the stairs, and I yeah. like that ain't something that my mom need to be helping me with. Like she already yeah. older up, up up in the age, like mm-hmm. so. Like I was, Shout I'm not about to have her go man. through that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not I'm not about to have her go through that and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I, I just stayed in the and I stayed in the, in my room most of the time until my until they actually got my chair. Okay. And then yeah. I was okay. able to get I was able to get in a I mean my chair was was, was like wasn't as wide as a hospital chair. Mm-hmm. So I was able to get in and out of the house, like in between mm-hmm. the house more often, but yeah, that's why I start going to school and stuff just to mm-hmm. get back out of the world. Okay, how do you feel like you were adjusting to to, uh, to life in a wheelchair? Uh, shoot, I'm I'm just fine, man. I, 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 yeah, like, mm-hmm. like the only thing I'm not doing is is is, is moving my legs on the cement, bro. Mm-hmm. I feel the I, exact have, same way, bro. I don't have no like- problems, bro. Bro, it came like second nature, bro. For real, for real. Yeah. It was like, all right, but this time I'm gonna have to be moving around. All right, bet. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. It's like okay. it, man, I'll be I, I like I I be having people hit me up too about mm-hmm. about being in a, a chair and stuff, man. Mm-hmm. I mean some people be going uh, paragraphs. <laughs> it's like it's, it's like they be taking it they be taking it too far. Like yeah, they do. Some of them do, some they, of them do, occasionally. They be taking it too far, and they be like, mm-hmm. bro, like, come on, man. We got to have yeah. some type of filter to this stuff. But mm-hmm. I, I be having people hit me up, and it's like, I, you just got to you gotta live yeah. life like as as if you – you just got to live life. Like, everything that you can do that, mm-hmm. that damn near able people are able to do, you can do mm-hmm. in a wheelchair. Yep. And mm-hmm. – it's just, it's just about taking that leap on going on going ahead and doing it like mm-hmm. so like I I I adjust pretty I I adjust some good with it mm-hmm. my I still get girls I don't have no problem in that field you know what tell us how is the dating life in a wheelchair how is it all right it's <laughs> I'm a I'm gonna be completely honest in okay. my point of view mm-hmm. happy what you have. It's very, it's 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 like uh, it's like 
it's like man, it's getting a full moon in the sky, bro. It's, it's real rare to me. I I believe. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't I don't feel like I don't feel like in our generation the way how females are in our generation. Mm-hmm. I don't think they really prepared to deal with people in a wheelchair. Like deal mm-hmm. have, be able to deal with everything that comes with it. Yeah. And uh, I feel you. So my dating life, like having a girlfriend. It's trash. Mm-hmm. Like I done been, I done been through some shit. Mm-hmm. Like I done had a girl get pregnant on me while we've been dating and everything. So like I done been through some shit. But mm-hmm. as far as like getting girls and having girls to have sex with or like like chilling stuff, I never had a problem with that. Okay. There, I, I feel like yeah. I feel like me being in the chair, girls come and be attracted to me more than they was before me I was too, in the chair. Me too. Exactly, bro. So like, and then you know, like, look, if you slick with the mouth too, then you know, yeah, you really should have no problem. But yes, yes, of course, it's gonna be one or two female, a few females that they ain't gonna mess with you because you in the wheelchair. But man, look, if you swag up on them, you come up on them with that. Yeah, you got your confidence. What chair? What chair? Yeah, you feel me? Yeah, you had a confidence and stuff. Mm And it be trip like (laughs) it's a funny story. So like. I went to San Diego like a couple of months after being uh, after getting my regular chair, right? Okay. And my the dude I do my YouTube channel with, he real sensitive about like mm-hmm. everything that come to me now. Like he's sensitive about okay. everything. So mm-hmm. we was when we was in San Diego, we was outside a bar. This girl comes up to me and she was like, she like introduced herself and told me like I'm real handsome and like wanted to get mm-hmm. my number and stuff. Okay. So as like, she walking away, my my homie go up to her like. What you say to him? Like, he thought she was saying so fucked up to oh, me. And I was damn, like, okay. bro, she was just trying to get at me. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, it's like, bro, like, so like, yeah, he was like, man, like, I always got people to be like, bro, I don't know how you be, you be getting like mm-hmm. way more females than I, than we do. And it's, mm-hmm. it's just your confidence, man. Your co- like, they see how confident exactly. you are, bro. It is. Exactly, bro. That's all it is, bro. Confidence, swagger, bro. That's it. Swag, yep. Yeah, you can yeah. still wear your shoes. You can still wear your same clothes. Exactly. It's, it's... Exactly, Man. bro. So, all right. So, okay. So, you get into a motorcycle accident, and that's what paralyzes you. All right? Yeah. What level is your injury? Uh, T4, T5, and it's incomplete. T4? Okay, so that's up a little higher. So yeah, I'm like I'm so literally at the bottom. Of, I'm literally at the bottom of my chest. But okay. since my injury is incomplete, my feeling done got on my back. Mm-hmm. It done got all the way down to my waist, and okay. then in the front, I'm like mid stomach, like right where my belly button is. That's where I stopped okay. feeling. Okay, but uh, yeah, so I, it's right where my belly button is. But as okay. far as like me able to use my core and everything, like. Mm-hmm. My core be getting stronger and stronger, like over time. Like especially now that I'm back in the gym, mm-hmm. it's been getting stronger. So I'm I'm mm-hmm. able to utilize my core and stuff, but feel it wise, yeah, feel it wise. Stop at. Okay. Uh, okay. Do you do you do do you feel like that you regret ever buying a ever buying a motorcycle? I want to get another one. For real. I want I want a bike. I want I want me a, I want to get me a Harley, man. And, and ride on a Harley, man. Okay. okay. I mean, just, as you can see, like I still go quad, I still go ride quads and stuff, of man. Of course, I just seen you I, on the four wheeler. Yeah, I don't never, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't regret it, man. That's that's that was my life, man. I I loved, I loved riding a bike. Like mm-hmm. it just happened that an accident like that happened to me. It could have mm-hmm. happened to anybody. Like exactly. it, shoot, it could have not had happened to me, and I could still be riding. So like, yeah, exactly, I don't regret it. Bro. Exactly, man. Hey, you, you just gotta be careful when riding them bikes, man. Was you wearing a helmet at the time? Yeah, but the only thing I wasn't wearing, where I, which I I usually wear, it. I still to this day don't know why I wasn't wearing it, cause I, I I don't remember, but I don't know why I was. I I usually wear like this little vest, and mm-hmm. it has like it has your spine protection and everything, mm-hmm. and I wasn't wearing it that day. So yeah, that's uh, the that's the only thing that. That I was not wearing that I usually wear it every time I ride. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I don't. I still. I don't know why I wasn't. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, that's crazy. Okay, so you, you said that you do YouTube now, right? Yeah. Yep. All Tell us about you, that. Tell us <laughs> what for real. <laughs> I ain't gonna cap, bro. Look, oh. look, look. All right. 
I went to school for animation, right? Okay. Like I will start going back to school for animation. Okay. And I'm like, man, I gotta figure out some way to make some money and mm-hmm. like, do, but doing something I want to do. Now that I, don't, I had to work for the man, like I can't mm-hmm. really go just go get a. a I mean, you could go mm-hmm. get you a regular job, but I don't want to do that no more. Like I, mm-hmm. I don't want to do that. So I was, I need to figure out something I want to do. Yeah. And me and my boy, we always used to debate about music. He okay. he he do music himself. Me, I'm just in love with music. Like me too, bro. Me yeah, too. I'm in love with music. I was like, man, I gotta figure out. I gotta like. I was like, bro, let's make a YouTube channel. Like us talking about music. Mm. And he was like, in his head, and he said he was like YouTube. Like, what kind of shit you trying to put me on? Like, For real? I was like, yeah. He was not. He was not messing with it at all, bro. Mm. And the only reason why he did it was because. I was trying to figure out something new to do in my life, and he oh, wanted to have my okay. back. That's the okay. only reason. That's what's and up. And now he like, he like YouTube where it's at. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro, YouTube is where it's at, bro. Yeah, yeah bro. Yeah. But, but yeah, YouTube, so man. yeah, man. I was like, I was like, man, I'm about to jump out there and do it, man. I because I I'm constantly watching your videos. Uh, I was constantly watching uh Corey Corey Pritchard videos. Okay. Um. Uh, I was watching Tall Guy, mm-hmm. and then it it'd be like some other YouTubers that I'd be watching. I was like, man, I'm, I'm okay. about to try to do this. So okay, so what do you man. do on YouTube? So I I started off with my reaction channel, Car Vibes React. We, okay. we react to all types of music videos and stuff. Okay, okay. And, uh, and now um I'm j- I just started my personal channel, mm, which okay. you know I'm getting into the daily vlog life from uh of myself. So mm-hmm. yeah, but yeah, you okay. it's a, it's a grind. It's a grind. It is, bro. It's, it, it it's is. a grind. It's, it's a grind. It's all about gotta, trial and error, bro. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You learn. You you learn like yeah. the way to how to get how to make it through it like over time, like. Mm-hmm. It's it's tough, but once you once yeah. you get that that once you get it going, it's like mm-hmm. well, once you find that thing that you feel like that you're really good at and you you passionate about and you really enjoy doing, bro. That's when the content really just flows. All right? you flows, really yeah. Got, you ain't really got to think about nothing. You know, yeah. like I, I've been there before, and you know, for my channel to be deleted, bro. When, bro, like we was moving at a rapid pace bro i remember as soon as i hit fifty thousand, bro i hit sixty thousand in like less than a week bro like my shit bro my shit was just going crazy moving. like yeah. bro just moving and then bro for that to be taken away from me it was bro it was it i wouldn't say it was a humbling experience because i was humbled at the time but i would mm-hmm. just say i i really had to really reevaluate that and then at the same yeah. time i was in i was in college at the same time i was going to college for business and then I remember right before it got deleted, bro, I was having a class and they was talking about mom and pop stores. And the reason why a lot of them end up failing over the long run is because they don't want to integrate with technology. You know, yeah. they, they keep like, you know, like they keep debating, oh, should we get it? Should we not get it? Why yeah, that's get it facts, if, bro. Like, just think about it. If, that's it's, facts, if it's not yeah. broke, don't fix it. You feel me? Yeah. And they're so yeah. used to doing mm-hmm. it the old way and they only want to take cash and, they don't want to get the card, and now ain't nobody carrying cash. And you, you, like, I'm gonna stop going yeah. there. I'm gonna stop going there because I know I need cash when I go up in there, or just bro, just little stuff. And they failed to integrate, and that's what I realized. I was like, you know what? I was doing the weed stuff at the time, bro, and I'm bro, I was popping on there, bro, like for like yeah. for real, for, for real, for real. All right, and uh-huh. for me to really have to leave that and really not go back to it, bro, it hurt me so bad, bro, because of the amount of work and the time I put in, bro. That you put and into I was it, yeah. so passionate about it, but I understood. I said, you know what, bro? I really got to adjust. If I'm going to be doing this YouTube thing, I got to figure out what works for me. And look, if, if I ain't supposed to be doing that, shit, I can't be doing that. All right? Good. Like, I, I felt some I... type of way, but I couldn't. I could not go back to do it because it, w- it wouldn't make sense. You see, and now you got the, and now you got this dude that came up after me. I look, I ain't mad at nothing like that, right? But, but I, but, but, but now that is but, now that no, is, look, is is cool to be on there. It's like not, not you, well, no, well, n- not that it's cool to be on there. You see, the problem with it is you getting all these views, bro, but you ain't making no money. Back in the day, you can make money. When I first started doing it, 
you can make money because on YouTube you can monetize anything at that time, right? Uh, but but now you couldn't make no money. So when my stuff got deleted was when YouTube was making that transition to where they was allowing advertisers to put their ads on what they wanted it to be put on. So yeah. most of the time they ain't wanted on them weed channels, right? So uh, bro, as soon as soon as soon as you put that video up, it's already got the yellow stripe. I mean, I, I got the yellow dollar sign. The so you flag. already getting yeah. limited, bro. So you ain't getting nothing, right? So the dude that came up after me, the one that his channel, I guess he, he started doing it around the time that my channel got deleted because uh, he was like a lot smaller. But he yeah. ended up getting he ended up getting like millions, hundreds of millions of views, bro. But like he said, he ain't make no money, bro. And it's bro, it's just bro, he hundreds of millions of views, bro, no money. He ain't make no money. I'd be hurt if I wasn't making no exactly, money. Exactly, bro. I'd be hurt. And I didn't want to be that person. That's the that's the person I I'd didn't want to be. You feel me? It, but it's because I, I understood, bro. I was like, you know what? Like, if, if I want if the goal is to be a YouTuber, bro, I'm gonna get paid like a YouTuber. If I can't do that, then shit. I look, I look, I look, I guess I ain't supposed to be doing that. All right. And that, hey. I had to integrate with it, bro. It's child. I ain't error. gonna lie. I had to do I had to do my research, bro, because Mm-hmm. To be it, say somebody new like me that was that coming up doing reaction videos, bro. Mm-hmm. That's copywriting, like mm-hmm. and in YouTube algorithm, that's copywriting. So you're not gonna get paid for it. Mm-hmm. So I had to do my research, bro. And like now, like I mean, I, I'm I'm gonna get paid for it. So I don't know if you remember the first time I came to your house, bro. I had told you like my account, my my YouTube had got mm-hmm. had got deleted, mm-hmm. and yeah, I had uh-huh. to fight to get it back. And that's mm-hmm. I. I, I I still to this day like because Drake had just reposted my video, so like Ooh. the the traffic that that was bringing in, yeah. bro, it was like I'm missing out on that traffic because they had mm-hmm. just deleted my 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 channel, bro, mm-hmm. and I had to fight it because it's legal to do reactions, like it's legal to to yep. advertise um, to Shout monetize to reactions, so, yeah. So mm-hmm. I it's man, it's, it's just about doing your research and a lot of stuff too. But I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, it's. A lot of YouTube, like they, they done, they done set a lot of new rules and stuff. I mean, yeah. because all these big advertisements mm-hmm. that they got, yeah, uh, uh-huh. when it couldn't affair you. So you know, I don't, I don't know if you, I don't know, I don't know if you actually realize. You see, but I, I'm aware of that only because I was in the, I've been in the YouTube space for so long. So H three H three, he was getting sued by another creator because he was. He was showing his content, but he was speaking over it. So that's yeah. when they, that's when they came out with the fair use rule and what what was deemed fair use and what was deemed you know copyright infringement. So shout out to him yeah. because he's the one that actually helped y'all actually get those actually written up in there to where y'all actually got the rules to where y'all can actually do the reaction videos and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah how was that going for him. you? Man, it's, it's it's good, man. I mean, we we have our ups and downs, but mm-hmm. it, it's good. Like I don't, I don't, I don't, man. I don't talk to a lot of celebrities that I never in my life thought I'd talk to. Bro. Name some, like, name drop, name like, drop. <laughs> like, bro, like I like I said, I spoke to Drake. Okay. I spoke to Big Sean. Oh like, damn. Okay. Uh, yeah, bro. Uh, I done spoke to uh, um, we spoke to Lakia. She a rapper. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh Janae Aiko done uh then uh reposted our stuff. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of shoot, it, it's DJs as uh, that's in radio stations in LA that mm-hmm. that hit me up and follow me. Shoot, I even though prof- the professor he not a music person, mm-hmm. I'm real cool with him because of this YouTube stuff. Like it's mm-hmm. it, it's crazy, that's like dope. That's dope. Yeah, bro, that's it's dope. it's dope as fuck. Like, yeah, yeah, even man. if I wasn't getting paid to to be able to experience that, bro, mm-hmm. it's it's a dope yeah. experience, man. Yeah, bro. Hey, look, man, I ain't gonna lie, man. With YouTube, bro, you get to meet you get to meet so many like minded people, bro, and man. so many so and, and a lot of us, bro. For a lot of us, you don't blow up overnight. You feel me? So it's a grind. And then they look, the look, bro, the ones that it took last, me a bro, year to get a thousand gonna make it. Man, it took me a year to get a thousand subscribers, man. You don't blow up like you, nah, like you, you don't. Man. You don't, bro. You don't blow up overnight. I know for my first thousand, bro, it took me like two years because I quit. Well, uh, not that I quit, but I stopped doing it. 
Yeah. And it took me a while. And then I got, I, I ended up getting a shout out whenever I moved out here. I think I had like 400 or something. And then I'm getting a shout out from, from my boy, Kevin Edwards. Right. Uh-huh. And he, yeah, he gave me a shout out. And I think I got like around like maybe like 1,300 followers from that. And then like it's like it steady kept like going up. But then remember, I told you I stopped doing this channel. And then I uh, went to doing my doing. weed channel and my weed channel, bro, just blew up overnight. And it was like, I was like, all right, but that's what I should be doing. <laughs> you feel me? And then, man, and you ain't never thought about bringing it back? Nah, bro. Now, you don't know why? Because, because I, I understand, I understand, even though it's legal here, I understand that companies don't want to be associated with it. That's why, that's why once I stopped, I said, all right, I'm not going to smoke on camera no more. That's why you don't see me smoke on camera at all. Mm. I be, if I smoke, bro, I, I don't even smoke on my Instagram barely. Barely. I, I might show yeah, some yeah, Trump, yeah, but yeah, barely, bro. But, bro, yeah. it's because companies don't want to be associated associated with it if it's legal or not. You know, mm. and it's just like, you know what? Those are sponsors I need, though. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, bro, I'm trying to get sponsored by, like, Pepsi one day. I don't know, bro, something. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> Pepsi, I'm yeah. pretty sure Pepsi don't want to be associated with that stuff. Yeah, I yeah, devil's I lettuce. All right, <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, well, hey, hey, Coke, that. Coke used to, Coke used to put drugs in they, in they soda back in the day. Hey, hey, I don't know, they might, real, they real. might let you. <laughs> That's why I said Pepsi, bro. I said Pepsi, but Coke tastes better. <laughs> Coke tastes better, bro. <laughs> you feel me? So, <laughs> and man, it is what it is, bro. Look, look yeah. it is what it is, bro. So. That's how I look at it. Look, yeah, it's man. a grind, bro. Like I said, it's trial and error. That's all it is, man. So that's what I'm doing. Look, bro, I'm still trying to find my way. Even with even with sixty some thousand subscribers on this channel, bro, I'm mm-hmm. still finding my way. You know, yeah. Mo- and most of the time, what you start out doing on YouTube isn't what You're you actually doing blow up off. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like yep. people don't blow up off. M- most of the time, people don't blow up off of what they started doing. It's trial and error, bro. That's it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then it's a, it's gonna be a new thing every time. Like you gotta you gotta switch it up. So like yeah, that's, that's even with me. Like I, I'm I'll be trying to find different different things to mm-hmm. take take my reaction channel to a different level. Yeah, but okay, yeah. What's some it, you it be do? so hard too because yo, like fan. I want to like I want to start like a sports. Po- I, I want to start, start like kind of like sports center in a sense, but like. Mm-hmm. But but I want to do that. I want to do that as a podcast and stuff. But mm-hmm. it'd be so hard because your audience, the audience that you gather, they be stuck on that one thing. Yeah. So like it's like you got to be trying to find. You got to try to find a whole another audience, and it's like starting mm-hmm. all over in a sense. Mm-hmm. So yeah. You see, I I do feel the same way, but I feel like me, pro, me navigating to the podcast area. I feel like as long as you kind of keep it in the same realm, I feel like yeah. that they'll be more accepting of it. You know, yeah. yeah. You know, Maggie Sandra, we still going to do videos on the channel. We still going to do vlogs. We just really ain't had the time because she's doing her real estate stuff. I'm doing this. So it's just, mm. bro, we really just ain't had the time, bro. So it's just, you know, I yeah. had to really think about, all right, what's something else that I could really bring, bro? Because this ain't something that I want to just let die, bro, because YouTube is really my dream, bro. Like, bro, I done spent countless yeah. hours up in the morning, up late at night, bro. Endless amounts of money, bro, on this, bro. Yeah, bro, I ain't about to stop now. You feel me? Like, I ain't about to stop now, bro. But I found, but I finally found something. Somebody into... I finally found something I was passionate about, bro. And me doing this little podcast stuff right here, bro. Like, bro, I've never been passionate about anything I did on YouTube, bro. Even the weed stuff. I wasn't passionate about that. I loved mm. it. But I wasn't really passionate about it, bro. I'm passionate about this, bro. For real, for real. But no, that, like, that's I, I enjoy helping that's... people. When you when you first posted that the the very first interview on your on your Instagram, bro, I told you straight up, like it's powerful what you was doing. Like I'm mm-hmm. sure I feel blessed even being a part of it, bro. Like you you know this like I don't I don't see nothing like this on YouTube as far as like mm-hmm. our community. Like yeah. it's nothing like everybody that's in our community. You got yeah. them people that have their own channel that, but they not mm-hmm. doing nothing to like really, uh, to really mm-hmm. put other people out there and like yeah. help and get their story out there and stuff like that mm-hmm. to make them feel kind of special. And that's yeah. what you're doing, bro. You making everybody feel special in the chair. Like, 
I I know there's some people that you that the one of them people that you had an interview with, bro, that that's been down about their situation. Now they probably like mm-hmm. they feeling better and stuff because they done had an interview like this with you and been able to share this mm-hmm. stuff and hear everybody comments I from the uh, video it, that they had. So I appreciate yeah, it. Look, I appreciate you coming on, sharing your story, and I really appreciate everybody that has came on and told their story, bro, because I understand what it's like to tell your story. Sometimes, sometimes you want to get it out so bad, but at the same time, you really don't, you know? And, yeah. But, but sometimes, bro, you need to get it. You need to get it off your chest. You need to only, get it but, off. But yep. only when you're ready, though. That's why I try to tell everybody, like, bro, just make sure that you're ready, you know? Like, make sure that you're ready to really tell your story, especially to the people that come on or they want to come on and they only been in the wheelchair a few months. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. like I'll make sure I ask them, bro, are you sure? Are you sure you're ready to do it? Because I know, you know, six months in, I wasn't I wasn't in that place, bro. It took me, it took me yeah. years to get there, bro. Years to get there. You know, so. Yeah, bro. That's so, it, man. I mean, that's yeah, because, it. it, yep, that's what I'm saying. This shit is good, bro, because this chair shit can eat you up, bro, especially if you keep it keeping an end on yourself. Exactly. They can eat you up in that depression. There's nothing to be playing with. So, like, yeah, you 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 doing this and showing everybody that different people that they can go and talk to, and mm-hmm. and get experience from, bro. It is it's helping that extra person out. Mm-hmm. Instead of if you wasn't doing this, it wouldn't be helping that person out. So, I appreciate yeah. it, bro. Thank you, bro. For real, for real. Yes, that sir. Means a lot, bro. For real, for real. That means a lot. You got anybody you want to <laughs> shout out? Shout out to the channel, bro. Shout out both channels again. Shout them out. You know what I mean? Shout yeah, your so, moms. Let's <laughs> shout everybody out, bro. Let's let's get it. Let's get it. Uh, yeah. Uh, shoot. Uh, you got my car vibes reacts as yep. as vibes with a V I B E Z, not an S. I- I'm gonna post and it then, on the screen, bro. I'm gonna post it on the screen. They gonna know where to go. Then, uh, you got my my personal channel is Rolling with Tone. Okay. And then yeah, I got my Instagram is two tone underscore AO. And then yeah, mm-hmm. shout out to moms, all my homies, Twan, mm-hmm. shoot, Isaiah, Jose, man. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate my sister, man. Mm-hmm. Shit, well, none of y'all, bro. Shit, I I would not be I would I wouldn't be living this life, bro. I know I wouldn't mm-hmm. like Yo, so, hey, yeah, shout man, out I to the support it. system out there, bro. Yeah, I, I appreciate mm-hmm. and I appreciate everybody that I met through that YouTube that that support me on my on my mm-hmm. YouTube journey, man. Yep. Without y'all shit, I wouldn't have none of the shit I got too. So exactly, yeah. bro. Exactly. Look, I appreciate yeah. you coming on, telling your story, bro. Like I said, look, somebody needs to hear this. All right, yeah, yeah. you might feel like you know, like somebody talking to me or somebody watching my videos that they gonna get some type of inspiration from bro i'm telling you somebody gonna get some type of inspiration from this video right here from hearing your story and they gonna mm. get about the bed bro for real for real yeah so Fact. like i said look it's all about just helping one person out bro and if we do that we did our job so thank you for coming yes, on telling your story shout out yep. to you man I shout appreciate out to the you. channel car vibes reacts you rolling with tone <laughs> you feel me make sure you guys yep. go check them out links will be in the description box below bro i appreciate you coming on man Peace, yes, sir, Have man. A good one, bro. All right, bro.